Now we can click on regression and it brings up a set of different type of modelers and we're going to just use this linear regression uh, which is one type of numeric predictor model that we can actually develop. So we'll drag this over on top of the data and then we must select the outcome variable. I often just name my outcome variables with the character Y uh, because it just helps me remember you know when we learned algebra in junior high we had Y variable which was the thing that was on the Y axis and then we had X variables that were on X axes and so I just like to do that uh, and it also sorts it to the bottom in the correlation matrix which makes it easier to work with later. So that's what I've done here. So I'm going to select this as my outcome variable then it goes ahead and builds the model. It shows me that my average percent of being correct is around 8 percent and it actually shows two different uh, types of information. It shows some for the training and some for the validation and we really are going to key in on the validation set and so some of it's available by just mousing over the model. I'll explain what these things mean when I go now and drag this up into the viewer and select regression summary. And we'll stretch this up so it's, we can see more of what's going on. In the regression summary we can see how many records were in the training and validation set. We can see what R squared is. We can see here that in this example about 88 percent of the changes in the output variable or the outcome variable price are explained by the combination of the input variables in the model. We also can see that we're within about 9 percent of the price. This is the mean absolute percent error and then this is the mean absolute error so we're usually within about $880 of price. So our estimates are that close to what the real values are. It's not terrible to be about that close when you're dealing with a $20,000 car. Uh, we would like it to be a little higher but it's not bad. This, you don't need to worry too much about this, this is the F statistic on whether the overall model is statistically significant and it is. Uh, and then we'll come down here and we will look to see what the coefficients and in class I talked about these being sort of like slopes that is that uh, for every year older a car gets then its value drops on average by about thirteen hundred and eighty dollars and if it has air conditioning it's worth about two hundred and thirty three dollars more and so forth for every kilometer it's gone it loses value by about a cent and a half of its value also over here we have indications of whether these are statistically significant or not that is it tells us whether or not these are we can be confident that these are not statistical flukes, that these slopes aren't just statistical artifacts and that, that there's some real values. And most of these are very significant, which means that we can have pretty good confidence in these. We do have doors that is not statistically significant. We have metallic paint that is not statistically significant. And so we can drop those out. And then we'll go and see if when we do that, if our values up here are better or worse or stay the same. So so this is so right now we're going to drop out doors and we're going to drop out metallic paint and we'll go and see how our model does. So I'm going to save this so that we can come back to it. So now I'm I can go to the partition data and repartition and excuse me, I can go to the partition data and create a derived data set that will bring the partitions down. Since we've already partitioned this data then we can go and just deselect the things that we don't want which was metallic paint so we're going to get rid of metallic paint and we're also going to get rid of the number of doors because they were not statistically significant and so what I will do up here is I will just put um, preliminary keepers and it's just me giving it a name that will kind of help me remember what we did and we'll create that now if you look up here you can see that there's 13 columns because I dropped two out now there's only 11 columns down here it's still partitioned and now we'll take our linear uh, regression modeler and drop it on there and create a model to predict price then we'll run this up into our regression summary and have a look and see how that compares with what we did before. First off uh, we'll bring up the old model so we can see when we had 13 variables versus when we have 
the, excuse me, I guess uh, the 13 variables was here, so we'll drag this over. And then we can compare it when we dropped out those two variables, see how things look. When we look at the overall model evaluations, it looks like that uh, our evaluations got maybe just a little bit better. It's, al it's almost too little to even talk about, but our mean absolute error dropped a little bit, and we got just a little bit percentage closer with the validation data. And so that looks good. That didn't get worse, and it actually got a little bit better. Our, modeler, our model got simpler, and the only thing that's left now are statistically significant uh, variables. And so uh, that, uh, so we actually improved our model performance a little bit, and we also got rid of those things that weren't statistically significant. One inference to draw from this is that since these variables did not improve our predictions, and when we dropped them out, things stayed the same or got better, was that doors and metallic paint really wasn't important to our model. They were just sort of like in there, but not really helping us out a lot. This is a better outcome because anytime the modeler is simple and does as good a job, then, uh, then you've done well.